In this repair video, we're going to be working on iPad Pro 12.9 inch that came in for no power. And the reason I want to work on this tablet today is because we have a customer that came in and brought us a gift. And the gift is RCA to HDMI converter. You know how in the last two videos, I spoke about how I'm not able to show you what's going on on the thermal cam because our RCA to HDMI box is faulty. And I have it right here. This is the faulty box that we have. Usually we plug the camera onto the red, white, and yellow, and the output goes to our switcher. So you can see what's going on on the camera. But the box failed and I'm not able to show you what's going on here. And I mentioned that I ordered two of those boxes, one to replace our faulty one and the other one to keep as a spare in case this one goes bad we have another spare but i was not able to get this thermal camera to work some people pointed out that i may have hdmi to av and not av to hdmi or rca to hdmi and that turned out to be true if you look here i bought the hdmi to av box and not vice versa i went to ebay i just added them to cart i bought them and i did not pay attention I bought the HDMI to AV. So today, the customer watched the video and he brought us the correct box, RCA to HDMI. I want to give a big shout out to Chris for this wonderful gift. And today we're going to use the box that Chris got us. And we're going to use the thermal camera to analyze this iPad and see what's going on. So let me plug this RCA to HDMI box. And I'm almost 100% sure the thermal camera is going to work. Okay, so we need USB power for this. I have a USB hub right here. So we're going to plug the USB cable here. And now we're going to plug our yellow, red, and white AV cable here. And the output is an HDMI cable that plugs in from here to the switcher. Okay, so I'm all set. I'm all set. And now all we have to do is plug in the cable to the thermal camera and we should see an output. I mean the other box, this box that I had lasted almost six years. Let me turn on the thermal cam. And the light on the switcher is steady, which means the switcher was able to see the camera. And look at that, the camera is working again. The thermal camera is outputting a signal again. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you for that RCA to HDMI box. I really appreciate it. So it was the box all along. I thought I had two bad boxes because I bought two of them. I tried the first one, it did not work. I tried the second one, it did not work. And I did not realize for one second that I have an HDMI to RCA rather than vice versa. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug power right here. And if we look at the amp meter, the amp meter shows 0 0.49 amps being drawn by the tablet, 0 0.49. So let's go ahead and point the camera onto the motherboard and we're going to plug power and see what happens. What gets hot on the board. And the board is right here. This whole thing is the board. Let's go ahead and plug power onto the tablet and see what gets hot. And look at that. I see a tiny heat spot here that I'm interested in and I mentioned this in many of my previous videos. It's the small heat spot that causes the big heat spot on the top and not vice versa. And how did I know that? Based on experience. So I'm interested in this guy right here. I'm gonna point my tweezers onto that guy right here. And let's go under the microscope and see what's going on. Right here. Okay. So my tweezer was pointing to this component. Now, of course, there's a margin of error. Maybe it's the component next to it that's shortened to ground or this component, but my tweezer was pointing here. 
let me disconnect power. And right off the bat, I see that the thermal pad has a burn mark onto it, right there. I see a burn mark on that thermal pad. I see discoloration on the thermal pad right here. So right now what I want to do is meter in diode mode. And let's go ahead and test this cap to see if we have a short. Meter in diode mode, and we're going to test both ends of the capacitor. We have a short, and we have a short. What about the one next to it? We also have a short. And if we test the one next to it... And the reason why we have a short on all those caps is because they are connected in parallel. The caps are connected in parallel. Right now what we're going to do is we're going to remove this cap and test again to see if we still have a short. My tweezer was pointing on this cap. I see a burn mark on the thermal pad here, so I'm going to assume that the problem is this guy here. And how do we remove this cap? We just snatch it off the board. Just like that. Okay. Just like that. You see? Now what we have to do is measure and see if we still have a short. Maybe we can do this. We're going to measure and see if we still have a short. Meter in diode mode and let's test. <laughs> the short is gone. Let's go under the microscope. I mean, the thermal camera was able to pinpoint us to the component, to the exact component that has a short on it. Look at this. We no longer have a short. And that's why physical inspection is extremely important when trying to repair a board. The job is done, and there's a 99.99% .99 chance the tablet is going to work. We got rid of the short. We pinpointed the component that is faulty, and we got rid of the short. We're not going to replace this capacitor. We're going to keep it empty like this. We do not have to replace this capacitor. This is a bypass capacitor. It's not going to have any impact on the tablet, on the behavior of the tablet in any way, shape, or form. The capacitor is connected in parallel with a lot more capacitors on the board, and these capacitors are used to filter. I gave an example a while back, and I said, let's imagine we have 100 police officers guarding a building. And one police officer decided to call in sick. He called in and he said, I'm feeling sick, I'm not going to be able to make it. Now we have 99 police officers guarding that building. One less officer is not going to impact the security of that building. Now, if that capacitor was a big one, was a huge capacitor, then yes, it may affect the stability of the tablet. But this capacitor, being a tiny one and connected in parallel with a lot more capacitors on the board, it's not going to affect the functionality of the board in any way, shape, or form. So we're going to leave it empty. And you can actually do more harm if you try to put that capacitor in, then leaving it out. The area is very crowded. You may end up knocking components off the board if you try to solder a new capacitor on there. So we're going to leave the capacitor empty and the tablet is going to function 101%. It's going to function better than factory. Okay, so I have the cable plugged in and <laughs> 0 0.98 amps. The tablet is being charged at 0 0.98 amps. And that's the perfect number. Done. The job is done. Big Boss is going to reassemble the tablet on Monday. Today is Saturday. Tomorrow is Sunday. We are off tomorrow. So we're going to reassemble the tablet on Monday, invoice the customer, and mail it back to him. That's it. Great end of the day repair. And it was all made possible by Chris and the uh, RCA to HMI box that he brought over today. Chris also brought us a video card, the 1060 video card to fix. And hopefully we can help him out. Right here. Right here. So we'll see.
All right, we're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.